Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Lee here. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing? Hope you all doing well. This is another episode of Speaking My Mind, where I talk about random stuff. I have no idea where it's going to go, how it's going to go. And um, so this episode, I want to talk a little bit about some of the, some of the, some of the, well, a few, I'm not going to talk about one holiday in particular, but maybe a couple of, a couple of ones that I've places that I've been to. So uh, I want to talk a bit about some of the coast, coastal towns that I've been to along the, uh, the south of England, uh, southeast and southwest of England, and share some of my thoughts about them for you guys today. So <clears throat> there are, and obviously, yeah, I know people will say, yeah, but they're full of sewage now. Yeah, well, some of it might be some not. But, but anyway, so uh, I really, if I haven't told people this already, I love going to the sea. I love going to the ocean. I love going to the beach. I love going to seaside towns. Um, there's just something I just some have I don't know what it is but I feel like whenever I go to the seaside and whatnot and maybe you know what I should do a speak in my mind episode walking along a beach one time that would be very very cool I did that um, but I've always had felt like some kind of connection to those kind of places uh, of being on the seaside looking out into the ocean I feel like a sense of calmness uh, whenever I'm at those place at those seaside, it's just there's just something about it. I can't describe the feeling that I have whenever I go to the seaside, but it does make me forget about all my problems, all the issues, and everything that's going on in my life. And it does feel like a sometimes, that even if it's a like most seaside places we go to, we're going to a, uh, just for the day and then traveling back the same day. We're there for like a couple of hours and then we're traveling back. So, uh, one that we've been to quite a lot is Hastings. Hastings is a very nice, Hastings is a very nice one. Uh, lots to do, lots to do there. I would say for a day trip, not worth staying over in my opinion, but you could stay over if you really wanted to. They've got some decent B&Bs as far as I'm aware. Um, they've got um, Crazy Golf, lots of arcades, uh, Pebble Beach, um, got a really cool pier when it's opened. I don't know why they uh, have a gate on it, but last time we went to Hastings, they didn't have the pier open, which was very annoying because it, I think it was, yeah, because it, it was in January. They never opened the time slot, even though it's completely free to walk on the pier. No idea why, but there you go. Um, and there's a go-karting and, and whatnot. And obviously lots of your chippy places and all and that as well. And uh, they got a... Uh, they got these nice, um, nice hillside tops as well. That you go in these special lifts that take you up to the hills. When you come, you can look overlook the overlook the main town of Hastings from the hilltop. So you can get a nice picture view of yourself, of your partner up there as well, which is pretty darn cool as well. Which is a nice little thing. Um, there was something else that was mentioned about Hastings as well. Oh yes, the um, Hastings have a nice little uh, old town high street. So if you go into uh, there's a part of Hastings where they have like um like lots of old uh, vintage shops which is pretty cool and you can uh, have a look in uh, as well which is a nice it's a small little high street not a long one it's, it's like a um, uh, nice couple uh, road and whatnot as well so there's that as well so um, Hastings is a really nice place to go to for us it's not because of where we live it's like a uh, it's it's like literally like two trains from us and we can get there in like a I think about two hours something like that or maybe less depending on the, 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 the type of train we get because it could be a fast or slow one um, can that be as well um, Brighton is one we've been to a couple of times as well um, Brighton's really nice um, another Pebble Beach um, lots of arcade places crazy golf and, and uh, they've got the um, the wheel as well um oh no i think it's actually sandy beach i'm getting mixed up actually um and they got um they got some nice they got a very fancy cool pier as well you can go on as well um i'm pretty sure that one's free pretty sure it's free um it's a nice one to walk along as well i really enjoyed that one and um 
uh, just to walk along. They've got lots of stuff on the on that map. It's quite a huge pier, Brighton Pier, as well. So you've got lots of stuff down there. It's there. Um, it's it's uh, nice to walk along and uh, plenty of plenty of few things to do. I would say it's a nice day trip one. I would say I don't know if it would have. I don't know if it crossed my mind now whether it has more or less than Hastings, but there's certainly plenty of things to do for Brighton. Another uh, decent, a good seaside town to definitely go and visit. Uh, one that um, uh, some others that I've been to. So Margate is a very. Uh, there's a bit of family connection to Margate. Actually, believe it or not, because I've had family who always used to go to Margate when they were younger as well so there's a connection to margate margate is a sandy beach now margate doesn't have uh, uh what, what, what margate has is obviously a very lovely sandy beach um the train station if you were travel if you weren't driving if you're going there by train train station is literally right by the beach you're literally like less than five minutes walk from the station to the main beach which is pretty darn cool um if you go by train and as uh, we don't drive we, we take a lot of places by train um but they also have a place called Dreamland, which is like a like a theme park of sorts. Now, I've been told that the last people who went to Dreamland, they did not have a very good time. It's actually very expensive and it's not value for money. Now, that could change. And I would strongly recommend if you go to Margate and you plan on going to Dreamland, do check reviews for it first um, because they might not be uh, worth your value for money. But that's only what I've heard from, from relatives who have been to Dreamland. Maybe some people have different experiences. It's a nice beach, some shops. Um, not as Definitely not as much as Hastings or Brighton, in my opinion. But still, if you're going to go somewhere to the beach and you just want to sit on the beach all day, Margate's definitely one to go to. However, bear in mind, obviously, Margate is a very... Um, you can get very busy during the summer. Very busy, that beach. So you will be... Yeah, you will have lots of other people around as well. Um, some of the other ones we've been to Broadstairs is a nice one um, it's not really for how can I put this not really for my age shall we say a bit more older people shall we say who go to Broadstairs and that's the kind of impression um, the, the, the when we went to visit it me and my partner um, there was very rarely people my age or even a bit older than us very many much older people at, Mar uh, at, at Broadstairs but it was a nice beach area there wasn't a lot there um i think we walked for and you can actually yeah we did we did so we got a train to broadstairs and depending on the tide um you can walk the coastline from broadstairs along the coast towards uh, ramsgate and uh, ramsgate is there's not there's quite there's a little bit in ramsgate to do but um they've got a beach as well and they've got a few things there as well uh not uh, a bit of a pier but not much um a few things here and there as well but you can literally walk it you could do yeah, we we did quite a bit in, more we did a bit more in ramsgate than we did in broadstairs to be fair because there wasn't a lot in broadstairs this was all in one day as well um i would say it's a nice day trip but i don't think it's worth us going back to those places if i'm honest um one other place uh, we went on a day trip too, not too long ago, was uh, Little Hampton. Little Hampton's a, a nice little, uh, an interesting one. It was a, um, it's it's not easy to get to via, tra uh, if you don't have public, tra if you don't have your own car. Um, it's got a nice beach there. Um, we got some nice walks along the coast. Um, not a lot in the town centre. They've got a few arcades uh, as well. And um, they got the crazy golf as well, to be fair. But um, I think that's just about it for Little Hampton. I mean, there's one or two other things I'm probably forgetting as well. Um, but it's a, ni it's a nice little... Um, little Hampton's a nice little little one to visit along along the coast there, I found myself. Now, one that's uh, that's an interesting one that some people have different reasons is Dover. Uh, we've twice been to Dover. Um, no, not to cross over to cross over um to france no uh, we visited dover not once but twice so the first time we went to dover we went to do the white cliffs the white cliffs and uh luckily it wasn't too windy on the day um but i can tell you that walk it's a long walk and um, there and back 
um, but it was uh, to there to the like the lighthouse and, and back along the white cliffs and as you walk it your phone signal will turn from British to French and sometimes French back to British along there because you're right on the edge um, it's absolutely gorgeous the white cliffs they really are gorgeous and you can really take some lovely pictures along there it's a beautiful beautiful to walk um, then obviously just there's no like um, like fencing or whatever to stop you falling off the cliff so don't get too close to the cliffs you have to be really care bear that in mind you know just for those there but um, <clears throat> uh, the, it's a really lovely walk if you like walks the White Cliffs of Dover I highly recommend and when you get to the it's quite a, quite a walk as well because when you get you'll get to this lighthouse very far away from the car park but at this place they have like um, cafe toilets and whatnot so you can kind of you know rest recuperate and whatnot before you make the trek trek back as well sort of thing and you need that especially if you're going to be walking the White Cliffs so um, so um, if you haven't done the White Cliffs definitely worth doing lovely lovely to do um, I think that's under National Trust as well. So you might, so if you're not under National Trust membership, you might have to pay to park your car at Dover. Don't quote me on that. Double check yourself. Um, the other place, so the reason why we went back to Dover for a second time was because of the famous Dover Castle. Um, Dover has a lovely castle with a great deal of history for it. And you, and I kid you not, we spent nearly, we spent pretty much all day in that castle so initially we were going to do the white cliffs of dover and do the castle but by the time we got back to the got back from the white cliffs of dover it was already like three o'clock or something and the castle only had like two hours left before it was open and we actually walked from the white cliffs to the castle and when we got there and the guy said that they were closing in about uh, about an hour or so and they said you sure don't want to get the tickets and in the end we decided not to get the tickets and instead just went home because we were already knackered as it is. We've been on our feet walking the whole White Cliffs of Dover. So I will say, obviously, you will not be able to do the White Cliffs of Dover and Dover Castle in one day uh, because there is so much in that castle uh, to explore the history and whatnot. Um, I cannot remember if, it, if what how much it was um, because it was part of... Um, who's the other one for Medu? Uh, so it's like... Um, it's like uh, uh, it's like National Trust, but it's like for I can't remember its name. It's like they do it like for all the medieval uh, English history sort of thing. I can't remember their name, but I'm sure someone will mention it in the comments. But anyway, they uh, you you get a lot for for that castle. There's a lot to explore in it. So we literally spent I don't know maybe about five hours or something in that castle. I think something like that. Um, it was a lot to do. Uh, in the end, I thought it was va oh, I, thought, I think it was value for money as well because there was so much history and what. And if you're someone who likes a lot of history, like historians and all that kind of stuff, definitely worth checking out. Going to Dover Castle, especially for history. Um, every now and then, whenever I check out um, Jenny, who does the Random Scottish History YouTube channel, and she goes to all these uh, historic places in Scotland. No, it makes me feel like, oh, I've got to go to Scotland. I've got to go on a trip with her to take me some of these fascinating places so we can learn about them. Because <laughs> I do. I do generally want to go uh, to Scotland and, and not just obviously for the countryside and whatnot, but actually learn actually some of the history uh, from the experts there. Not just simply talking about it on, a, uh, on YouTube, but actually go there and see it and experience it, you know. Um, but uh, Dover, Dover is a, you know, there's a lot to, so those two, apart from the White Cliffs and the castle, there's nothing really too else to do. I mean, you can, like, the, the, the you know, obviously there's the, the port, obviously, the, the Callis port, but the port, port to Callis and whatnot. That there's, there's a, there's, there is a beach, um, which you can walk along, which is okay, um, but nothing really there. Um, small little town centre, not, not really a lot um, in terms of like places, arcades and whatnot. It's not like uh, Hastings that I spoke about or whatnot. So don't think of Dover like one of those towns. It's, it's not. It's, um, if you go to Dover to visit, go and do it for either the White Cliffs or for the castle, one of those two. Um, it's not really worth doing it for the anything else, if I'm honest. But what do you guys think of some of the places that I've talked about? Um, what do you guys, have you guys been to any of them? Do you know anything about them yourselves? 
Let me know your thoughts about some of those places. Brighton, Hastings, Broadstairs, Dover. Let me know your thoughts about some of them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I hope to catch you all very, very soon.